Hi, this is Charlie Montotuyella with Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, as always, you know our website, bluebearflutes.com. If you haven't yet, check us out on Instagram. Our Instagram, Blue Bear Flutes, is one of the coolest Instagram pages I've ever been to. It's because I don't go to any Instagram pages, but anyway, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's absolutely fantastic. I have looked at quite a bit of Instagram, but it's not really my thing, uh, except I love to look at our Instagram. And I know that sounds vain, but it's really just, I don't know, I like to look back on the flutes that we've made. We've made so many flutes. It's unfathomable. Yeah, that's a word. Anyway, so I wanted to share with you today some drone flutes. Drone flutes have become increasingly, uh, or is it, are becoming increasingly. Anyway, they have become quite popular amongst most everyone who is interested in Native American flutes because it gives you a harmony tone along with your flute tone. And who wouldn't want to have a good backup that played on demand? In other words, by yourself. <laughs> anyway. Uh, if you can trust yourself well enough to play backup, uh, you can. Anyway, I'm just trying to elicit a smile here once in a while. But I wanted to share a bunch of these different drones with you so you know what it is that you're looking for. Maybe uh, those of you who haven't thought of getting a drone in the past were wondering which direction to head, or maybe you've just all of a sudden seen somebody's drone flute and decided you absolutely had to have one. Uh, so this is just to give you some ideas of what drone flutes are and what they can do and how you might want to choose your own. So uh, if you're thinking of buying an, a new drone and you've already had one for a while, but you need one that's small enough you can take with you, uh, there are a number of small drone flutes that we make um, from one range to the other. Well, as a matter of fact, we used to make some quite small drone flutes that you can actually stick in your pocket. This little guy here is a key of high D. It's about, uh, shoot, maybe 10 inches long and it's small enough that it'll easily fit in my backpack. I've taken it with me all over the world, and uh, it's a really neat sounding little flute, and you can play a lot of different stuff on it, so. So it's a neat little instrument, something that, uh, once again, it's small enough that you can travel with it, um, as all of our drones these days, that the standard straight drones that we make, uh, it has an extra fingering in the back, so you have a few extra tonal notes that you can play on the drone chamber, which when you're playing back up with yourself, that's actually kind of a, a cool thing to do. Here is the next size up, which is a C uh, backpack drone, one of my absolute favorites that I do love to play, still small enough to fit in my backpack. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of wind. That's something you've got to think about. Many people think that they want to play a really low tone flute, and that's fine. We make a lot of low tone flutes, and there are a lot of low tone flutes on the market out there, uh, but then they start thinking they want to play a low tone drone because a drone with that extra accompaniment uh, actually has so much harmony and so much sound that carries and has such a beautiful tone to it as it is, why not mix that with something that's low tone because most people attract to low tone flutes anyway. Um, so people think they want to play a low-tone flute and a low-tone drone. The low-tone drone takes twice as much air as a low-tone flute does. So think about that before you decide to. Little backpack drones don't take much air at all. They take twice as much air as a key of C flute would because you're playing two C flutes. So two mouthpieces, you can decide to play So this little guy, once again, just a small backpack drone and another key. Once again, one of my favorites too that I like to carry around with me. Um, another type of drone, a lot of people have told me, and of course it's the reason we make them, that they really love the A-frame drones. Historically, there were not a lot, if any, A-frame drones. I know I'm gonna get in trouble, so I'm just gonna say, what about this? Typically, the A-frame drones that we know of are European. Um, there are a few of the straight drones, like the ones I just showed you, that are actually um, types that are from other countries. People in other countries made those. And typically, Native Americans did not make these out of wood. They were made out of clay. Uh, so most of the drone flutes, I guess I should tell you from that direction, 
are made out of clay historically. Today we make them out of wood because I've got to tell you, to tune a clay drone flute would be a nightmare. And uh, if it's not a nightmare, it's made out of ceramic and it's not what you're looking for, or at least it's not what I'm looking for in a Native American flute. So uh, the clay drone flutes were incredibly cool. Some of them I've shown you pictures of before that look like snakes. Uh, there's some that are just multiple chamber tubes. Uh, they even had uh, a lot of triple drone uh, clay drone flutes. That was kind of more the common thing, although the, you know, the single drone like this guy, the double, double flute, was a typical um, clay drone flute that was made in Central America. Um, but once again, getting back on track here, the A-frame drone was not one that was like super common. I've never seen a historical, uh, and somebody may be going to post a link to that, but you know, fine. I've never seen a historical example of one of these from the Americas. So having said that, making an A-frame drone is easy. You basically have two flutes and you put them together. You know, it's, it's simple enough. And that's the reason a lot of uh, flute makers are interested in making the A-frame drone because it doesn't take away from their normal stock. They've already got these flutes sitting on the shelf somewhere and they just smash them together and there's an A-frame drone. Um, having said that, there are some differences between playing this and playing one of our standard drones. With our standard drones, as I mentioned, you have an extra fingering in the back. That extra fingering gives you an extra tonal note on the drone chamber. Given it the possibility of making three notes on the drone chamber, which you can get two out of most of our A-frame drones. So I'm just going to play the drone chamber. There's no notes to be played there, it's just a drone. But you can play which is me blowing a little bit faster, making it jump octave on purpose, and you can use that in the music, which is kind of cool. Uh, one of our good friends, uh, Cliff, it's been such a long time since I've seen him. I wish he was still watching our YouTube channel. I'm not sure where he's at in the world. Dude traveled a lot, played our drums all over the place, made some really cool videos. Um, but uh, he was an inspiration for me to decide to make these on a regular basis. And uh, after making so many of the River Cane drone flutes that we made, once again, very convenient. We decided to start putting them into the wooden version, and so we make them out of wood these days because people request them, and I still like to make sure that they do that little extra tunnel thing. So this is something you can do with it. So once again, two mouthpiece holes allows you to play the flutes separately, which is great. But because it's an A-frame, there's nowhere to put an extra fingering on the back that you can use during play. And I don't like putting extra fingerings on flutes that you can't use while you're playing them. A lot of people have drones that have like hundreds of holes in them. And sometimes I look and think, is that a first time flute maker that just drilled a bunch of holes to see what would happen? Or is it somebody that's actually making a playable instrument? And when you make a playable instrument, like this is our fourth drone. The fourth drone's one I've thought so many times about taking off and putting them back and taking them off and putting them back. It's not my favorite. I like it a lot. It's really cool, but it's not my favorite. The fifth drone just, to me, makes it so, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say obsolete, but the tone of the fifth drone is what works for me. I should say that. Uh, but I'll play this one for you. There are tonal drones. You see the drone chamber is a different size on this guy than it is on the other side. Um, there are tonal drones that can play different tones all together. And you notice there's only three holes on each side. So that actually is a convenience of being able to, to do this. You actually use all the holes because you have enough fingers for it. Whereas with the other drones, when people put plugs that you have to unplug and plug back in, you can do that minorly during play, but you know, what happens if you drop your plug? Or um, if you're playing and something requires you to take off two plugs at a time, do you just play and then you stop, take them out, put them down, and then you start playing again? Or, you know, so it's, and I'm not asking, I'm just saying that, that for me, I like to make flutes that are work, you know, something that you can play. And that's the reason I put only the one thumb hole on our standard drum. This flute, 
doesn't have any thumb holes for a number of reasons, but good reasons, I promise. But I'll play it for you. Once again, this is our fourth drone, which is one of our Aztec and Mayan temple drones, we call them. Basically a wood adaptation of old Central American Indian flutes that I've played. Um, and this fourth drone is a fourth harmony. So you've got two sets of, of we got two separate flutes here. One is a F sharp and one is a high B and they are a fourth apart in tone. So that's why we call it a fourth drum. Um, I'll play it for you. There's one set of notes in here that are not, they're like side by side, they're A's and B's side by side. So you can play what some people would call a sour note. However, uh, in music, there are some sour notes that are not that sour. So you've got to, gosh, it's such a world out there. You pull your hair out sometimes. But anyway, uh, this is a fourth drum. sound too bad at all. It's actually, it is pretty dang cool, if I might say so myself. However, my favorite, as I always tell you guys, and this is another one, even though it's a little bit bigger, it goes everywhere with me. This is our fifth drone, also one of our Aztec and Mayan Temple drones. It's a high B on one side and a low E on the other side. I know the E and the F sharp are only a couple steps apart, but the tone differences you get from mixing these two flutes together, a perfect fifth, the tone differences are, to me, they're magical, and I've been making flutes for 33 years. I know we talked about not discussing how time and what have you, because I, I don't like our videos to have like a time stamp. I like them to make sense all the time instead of saying, hey, there's this going on, or hey, there's that going on. Um, anyway, I've been making flutes for a long time. We've made a lot of flutes, a lot of flutes. Oh my God, I've had my hands. I don't know if other flute makers that make a lot of flutes can actually say that they personally have made millions of flutes. But anyway, after hearing all these flutes <laughs> and trying not to go crazy, this here's my favorite. It really is. I really love it a lot. Now I've got its little sister over here that I'll play for you in just a second, which might make you think, why doesn't he sell those on the website yet? Or maybe he does by this point. Anyway, so here, here he is. So, you know, really, I know that's not enough of me playing this thing, but this isn't a video about the fifth drum. Um, this is uh, certainly one of my favorite flutes that we have ever made. So that's why I always promote that one. Here's a little guy. This one is actually a high, let's see here. It's a high A and a high D. It's my backpack fifth drum. I may or may not carry it by the time you see this video. I don't know. It's been off and on. I've, Kind of decided to and not to and kick myself for not and then kick myself for thinking I ever should offer them. But that's what it is. It's a small fifth drone that is very high in tone. Everybody doesn't like high tone flutes. High tone drones, maybe a little bit different. High tone fifth drone, I'm not sure because this high D is really high. But here she goes. a really cool little, little flute. So once again, harmonic drones are drones that play different flutes at the same time rather than two of the same flute, which is this one, which I'll probably be using for some more demonstrations in the very near future. It's a flute that I made for my wife. The second we cut this piece of wood, I realized I had to give it to somebody as a gift because it was just too, too beautiful. And usually I give those to Jesse, my camera person and my wife. Um, because, anyway, I've been giving her flutes 
since <laughs> day one. It's been a while. So uh, anyway, I like to give her uh, all of our best. And some of our new flutes, this one we had been making for a while, but something happened and this piece of wood just touched me. So I thought, you know, it actually, now that I look at it, it looks like a piece of cut fish. Uh, that's not what I intended whenever I decided to give it to her, but um, I will probably be using this one in some of my demonstrations because it is one of my favorite standard drones I've ever made, even though it's just, I think it's a G, yeah, it's a G um, straight drone. And uh, it just, it has kind of a temperament to the, to the wood that's perfect. Uh, the look of it is, in person, it's incredible for a piece of western cedar. It's very slick. I don't know if you can see it, but it does some neat stuff with the light. Anyway, that's why she wound up with it, and she'll probably let me borrow if I ask her nice. pretty pretty piece of wood so I'll keep that little G drone over there a G drone is not a whole lot of air to be playing it's like two G flutes of course but it's less than playing say for example a D flute a D flute in diameter is about a third larger and then the flute itself is about mm, not quite half between half and a third longer than an actual G flute or the G drone for that matter um, so it's a bit of air to play, even just a low D flute. I'm going to struggle a little bit with this, and the reason I am is because working with my hands for so long, I've developed a little bit of uh, arthritic pain. Not not so bad. I actually manage it better than probably most people. We do a lot of exercise, so I mean that really helps inflammation to go away. Believe it or not. Uh, but there's a hole in the back of this one. Most of the low E and low D drones that I ship like this with a hole in the back of them, I still put a plug in them. I don't offer a plug with these anymore unless someone emails me and tells me that they have arthritis. <laughs> and I'm like, listen, no problem, I'll, I'll put a plug in it. The plug so that you can take it out if you want to use it and take, put it back in if you don't want to use it. I mentioned that I don't believe in making flutes that are like that. And for that reason, I have debated over whether or not I should leave and put a hole in the back or not but it has to be in a location that not only lines up with the convenience of your thumb to be able to play it, but also it has to be at the right note and the right tone. So there's some difficulty for someone like myself who has medium-sized hands, I have like mid-sized hands, and uh, I don't have quite the finger stretch to do all that at once. Play in a D flute, no problem. Granted, I have seen other flute makers D flutes which have longer spacings in between the holes, this would make it difficult. If you're playing a six hole D flute, once again, forgive me, those of you, I appreciate you watching our video so much, you'll just have to understand my politics of the modern six hole flute. If you haven't seen any of my modern six hole flute politics, please go back and watch some of those videos, even just skim through them. You know what I'm talking about. I make six hole flutes that have a fingering actually up here rather than down there. And we could get into a long, deal about that, but I've got videos on that, so go back and watch it. Anyway, when you have a like a modern six-hole flute that requires you to keep a hole covered all the time, some people say that that's good because I rest my finger there. Well, listen, without the hole, you can rest your finger anywhere you want to. <laughs> that's kind of nice. So um, this flute here, a five-hole flute, will play as many notes. Oh my gosh. Is he going to say a five-hole flute will play as many notes as a six-hole flute? It will. Our five-hole flutes will play as many notes as anybody else's flutes will, Native American flutes. Um, the reason is you don't have to have that extra fingering there to play that wrongly placed non-minor pentatonic scale note. You don't have to have it. You can play it in a lot of other ways. And I've got demonstrations for that. I'll even do it right now. like playing that note. It's not in the scale. If I'm playing some kind of song that I need to play a chromatic note, I'll play a chromatic note. They're all over the flute. There's tons of chromatic notes here. 
you don't have to have that extra fingering. Anyway, it's kind of in a way, and when your hand wants to turn one way like this to play something that's so big, you don't really feel comfortable putting a finger there. So if you buy a low tone, a low D, a low E, even an F sharp drone from someone, there might be a stretch for you to put your finger right there. So keep that in mind. Um, maybe they tie a piece of leather on it. Of course, what's the purpose of having that hole? But on our flute, there's no, there's no hole there, so you don't have to worry about it. You can still play the note if you feel the need to play it for whatever reason, but there's no hole there, so it's a lot more convenient. If you notice my little medium-sized hands, this is a low D drone. <laughs> I could go on, couldn't I? So many of you are home, and I have to break this right now, are saying, well, that sounds so beautiful. Couldn't you just make a video of you playing that drone? I probably have, but, you know, to be honest with you, the convenience of being able to play a drone, the amount of breath, there's a lot of important things going on there. I've been playing for 30 some odd years today, so uh, tomorrow it'll be more than that. But with all that time and experience, I've learned how to play a lot of flutes. And, you know, I can play and make it sound good, but does that mean that someone with short breath or small hands or even medium-sized hands may have a difficulty playing, say, a six-hole low D drone, uh, if you find one of those out there somewhere, or even the five-hole. Like I say, it's got a lot of stretch here going on. You will get it with a plug in the back for me, but only on the low-tone ones, because like I said, it's not always convenient. Some people have fingers that can reach it and some don't. My medium-sized hands, I do. So now all of you want to buy one of these, but let me tell you, okay, this is going to lead into the next thing. So there's amount of breath it takes to play a large drone flute that you got to think about. There's also this right here to think about. Some flute makers that decide they want to make a drone flute make the mouthpiece really spread apart. This is a D, so a D is quite spread in my opinion. This one is about one inch. Usually I like to make them somewhere between, uh, for a standard drone, three-eighths of an inch, and maybe a half inch is a huge one, but this one's about one inch. What, what does that matter, right? You can put your mouth on it and play it. Obviously, I can. I don't know if I have a big mouth, but it sure sounds like it. <laughs> okay, I got the camera person that time. She's laughing. So um, you've got to think about that, and this is why. When you open your mouth really wide to play a drone flute, or if you have a flute that has a tiny little mouthpiece, and I don't I don't make those, so I don't have any to show you right now. But if it has a tiny little mouthpiece that goes in your mouth, that triggers a salivary reaction. You might hear me right now where I'm thirsty because I talk too much, okay? Uh, yes, I said it. I talk too much. But hopefully you're getting some out of this or you wouldn't be watching this long. But anyway, um, when you play a flute that either goes in your mouth or makes your mouth open wide, it triggers a salivary response, which makes your flute wet out faster. I have talked about this once again. We have videos on wetting out, something to think about. So therefore, I no longer offer, and probably won't ever re-offer, the triple drone. There's people that's made drones that are four and five drones and all kinds of drone chambers. There's um, some flutes like, uh, I think it's, Trying to think, I think it's either Cambodian or Korean. A vat, uh, it sounds Korean anyway, um, which is not a drone, it's like a giant flute harmonica. It's really cool. It's on a little spindle, and you can blow while you twist it, and it changes the tone. So that's kind of cool. It's like a drone because you can spread your mouth like a harmonica and blow on more than one tube at the time. Or if you're really good with a pan flute, you can do that on the pan flute, but it they're larger, so you've got a little to think about. Um, but with this, you have three tone chambers. 
And the less experienced flute player or flute maker out there might be thinking, well, just make one flute, you know, one chamber so that you only blow in there one time. You can do that, right. But then you are always playing. It's like it's always on. You know, sometimes I might want to just just play the flute side. And sometimes I might want to play just a two, two drone, you know, single drone side with the flute side. And then sometimes you can play. Just playing that note all the time. But you hear the amount of air it takes to play a A triple drone. Sounds like it's more air than it takes to play actually a low D drone. But most importantly, you have three holes, which means you spread your mouth wider, causes it to wet out faster. That's something to think about. And then we get into the fancy ones. So there are fancy drones out there. We make some really nice ones. And people usually, sometimes they'll buy my GNF Sharp uh, thermally treated poplar or performance flutes, uh, the drones. Sometimes they'll buy those, but usually they buy the small ones. And I got to tell you, they sound crazy, super incredible. Hopefully crazy is still a positive thing at the time you get to watch this video. Because when I grew up, we used to say, that's crazy, but that means that's amazing. Um, just so they're super cool. I mean, the high tone, but there again, do you want to be carrying, you know, a $200 drone around in your back pocket? I personally would rather carry like a $100 drone. And once again, money is kind of dating this. And so, you know, you might think, well, where am I going to get a $100 drone these days, you know? But, uh, <laughs> of course, that's what I'm thinking in the future when I'm actually older. I'm sorry. I just time, time looped on you guys. Uh, so, um, this sounds really great. It's an amazing... sounding little flute and it's really really great I mean so if you wanted the cream of the crop um, you can get a high C or a high D backpack drone in the, our performance flutes hopefully by the time you see this we're still offering these these are really really great flute I love them a lot but like I say just something simple you know if that's the if your first drone or even your second drone you don't have to go all out although the fifth drone is one of my favorites and uh, you might look at the price and think yeah it sure is one of your favorites Actually, our low tone ones are much more expensive because they take a lot of work to make those. The fifth drone takes a lot of work to make those. This guy, when we make this drone, it's in two pieces. And the two pieces require between, let's see here, between four and eight passes, depending on the mood I'm in that day, four and eight passes per side on my tools when I make them. So that's two sides times that. That's a lot of work that goes into making just the skeleton of the flute, not to mention the sanding. Oh my gosh, the sanding, it never ends, the sanding. But most importantly, the tuning. So getting the flute tuned properly is very important. And for that reason, there are times when the drone chamber, I have this one set to where it doesn't play the top note unless you really blow but the reason I have it set like that is because sometimes the drone chamber, due to minor you know, differences in the way the flute's made, um, won't play the top octave perfectly, so won't make it spot on. So I'll make it to where you have to blow really hard to make, make that happen. And it's not by accident, it's, it's on purpose. Um, but still, like I say, you can hit it, you know, you can still get three notes off of that. You can probably get a fourth note, but you don't want to play that one. Don't go there uh, when you blow too fast with the fingering uncovered. Um, but uh, but anyway, standard is a really great flute. There's no reason for you to want a triple drone um, unless you've actually played one and it's your it's your kind of thing. Uh, it's not my kind of thing. I love our standard drones, and our fifth drone is like I said, my favorite in the whole wide world. It's really really amazingly super cool magical i don't put that word on a whole lot of stuff um but uh but this guy here like i said uh, such a beautiful beautiful flute
once again, I could play this guy all the time. So I hope this has helped you guys answer your questions. I think I covered about everything, everything from people with drones that have fingerings you have to unplug and plug back all the time to make them play those extra notes. Uh, the A-frame drone, which I personally have not historically found a version of that in the Native Americas. Um, it may have happened at some point in time. There may be one that's even made out of clay, but historically most of the ones I've seen uh, from Central America, um, from Mexico, uh, most of those, and most of them are from Mexico. They're really just amazing looking. They do some amazing things. Making them out of wood gives me the opportunity to tune them amazingly, and that's what I like. Um, and the uh, small drones are really great for their convenience. Uh, if you don't mind the high tone, two high tone flutes playing at the same time and you have control over that, that's not really so bad if you're not fond of high tones. Um, playing a high tone drone is actually pretty, pretty nice. And then the low tone drones, uh, conveniences, you know, you might not have a backpack big enough to fit a G in, but you probably would a high C or high B, and maybe even an A, which is one of our standard first drone we ever offered was an A, and we make lots of those today. People still buy lots of A drones. Uh, but anyway, I hope this has helped you guys make your decision on what you're looking for. You might decide you don't want a drone. I mean, it's all cool. Everybody's got their own uh, ideas, and you might decide that you just want to play standard old flute, which I love to death. It's been my life. It's how I met my wife, and all of my kids have played them since before they could walk, which is really amazing. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you find this video very helpful. If this is the first time you've ever seen us, we have hundreds of videos on making flutes. Uh, the day that we made this video, we still sell them. <laughs> Not saying anything, but uh, we make lots of flutes. Lots of flutes. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Find us on our website, bluebearflutes.com. If you have any questions or positive comments, feel free to shoot them down in the comments below. We love to see those. And Mr. Thumbs Down, we miss you. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Take care. If you feel like changing your mind, maybe a thumbs up here and there might be okay. Maybe hit that bell icon like Mr. Thumbs Down does because he never misses a click every time we put out a video. He's like, uh-uh, but uh, it's okay. We love him. You guys take care. Happy flute playing. Happy flute making for those of you brave enough. And uh, be careful if you are. Make sure you wear your safety goggles. Wash your fingers. Don't use big, heavy tools. Don't do that. Just be safe. Take care. Charlie Montatuyella signing out for Blue Bear Flutes and BlueBearFlutes.com. And Blue Bear Flutes on Instagram, Facebook, and every other social media platform I can find time to put on. Y'all take care. See you soon. Mm -hmm.